I think we can start. Haven't heard yet from uh, Joyce, but yeah, uh, hopefully she can join uh, later. But yeah, if you're ready, I think we can start. Yeah, happy to kick off. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so yeah, uh, hi everyone. Thanks for joining another uh, Wonder Workshop. Uh, so yeah, today uh, uh, GCR is proud to host an AMA. Uh, call with uh, Oleg uh, Fomenko, who is co-founder of uh, Sweetcoin, uh, now renamed to Sweat Economy, uh, a free app uh, which uh, rewards your daily steps with a new uh, generation currency. Uh, you can spend on cool products or donate to uh, to charity. Uh, Oleg here uh, will let us know more, but uh, yeah, as a co-founder and product lead, uh, he uh, uh, will walk us through the creation of uh, Sweet Wallet uh, on Web3 and uh, uh, Sweat uh, Token from the transition of uh, Sweatcoin on Web2 app and share uh, his vision and perspectives on making the world more uh, physically active. Oleg, it's a pleasure to have you here and thanks uh, for your time to uh, share this with our community. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Tiny little, sorry for being a bit anal, but it's our name. Uh, we are sweat coin, not sweet coin. Uh, it's very, very often that uh, uh, people make this mistake, but we're about sweat, which is a sign of effort uh, rather than sweet, which is candy, and it gives you weight. So, you know, kind of while they are very similarly sounding words, they, you know, the end result or the impact uh, on our bodies and on our psyche are very, very different. Got it. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for clarifying that. Okay, so yeah, uh, to start, I mean, yeah, feel free, please, to briefly uh, introduce yourself and also the uh, SWAT economy and how big is uh, the, the team now. So yeah, curious to, to know more about that. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Oleg. I'm one of the uh, original co-founders of SWATCOIN. That is our web Two business that we started in 2014. So it's been a very, very long time. As Sweatcoin name suggests, we were thinking about blockchain back then. Um, you know, we really wanted to build currency backed by the value of physical activity all the way in those years. And those that remember those years know that the only blockchain that existed back then was Bitcoin. So we did look into forking Bitcoin, we got a price quote, and we realized that it would be several hundred thousand more and nine months longer to develop our minimum viable product than if we were to use Postgres as our blockchain. Given that we are very pragmatic businessmen, we kind of went, hang on a second, you know, kind of, this is too long, too expensive uh, for the minimum viable product. We will simply add blockchain later because the biggest question that we had back then is would people walk more if you start paying them with a new currency and then would brands be interested in accepting that currency for their goods and services because they're chasing you know physically active uh, people so we launched in 2016 and it was an incredible success. By early 2017, we already had more than a million users, and we were processing more than several hundred transactions per second. So our decision not to go with Bitcoin fork has saved our lives because those that are staying on top of technical details know that Bitcoin can process maximum eight transactions per second. And we were effectively factor 30 uh, more demanding than Bitcoin could offer us. So that decision saved our lives. So we started scaling, geographical expansion, acquiring users, and every year we were paying attention to blockchain space. We were looking at new projects coming in. We did meet Vitalik in 2015. We have been talking to guys behind Polkadot, um, you know, kind of since their pretty much inception. We were looking at their research grade code and we're seriously considering potentially using them 
uh, as a solution. However, we've always been, our scale and our requirements to throughput were always ahead of technological development in blockchain until last year. Last year, all of a sudden, we've seen Near, uh, Solana, uh, Polygon, Avalanche, Algorand. And we got really, really excited because all of a sudden we realized that technological development started delivering on throughput levels that were sufficient to support our scale. So we looked at more than a dozen different chains and we have chosen Near as a partner. By the time we started building on Near, we already had more than 120 million users on Sweatcoin, which again is our Web2 business. And by the time we went live September last year with our token, Sweat, and with our new app called Sweat Wallet, that is the mobile application that allows you to manage your sweat and get the maximum value out of it, we were already approaching 130 million users. Last September, Near uh, and us were able to pull off the biggest TG in history of Web3. TG is token generation event. We, when we had 13 million token holders receiving their tokens in space of one day, by now, we have more than 5 million people on our wallet or using Penisweat Wallet mobile app. And approximately 2.5 million of them are active. So we have effectively two businesses, Sweatcoin, which is centralized mobile application where you, know, you basically walk. And it's a pedometer that verifies and allows you to convert your steps into currency, sweat coins. If you want to opt in and play crypto game or participate in crypto, you click a few buttons and first 5,000 steps of every day are converted into sweat. And after that, you continue earning sweat coins. So we have two businesses, Web2 Sweat Coin and Sweat and Sweat Wallet is effectively our Web3 branch. So all of this is called Sweat Economy. You asked about the size of our organization. We are 135 now, and we're continuing to recruit. So, you know, despite all of this economic, you know, kind of turmoil and a lot of projects killing over and, you know, kind of losing people, we're actually continuing to recruit because we know that we will be one of the winners. And when the bull market comes, you know, our boat will be floated higher than others. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, such a huge team. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's really great. And thanks uh, for, for providing those uh, details. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, you uh, mentioned uh, regarding uh, sweat coin and also uh, sweat uh, token. So, yeah, I mean, would like to learn more about the difference, uh, let's say, between sweat coin and, uh, and sweat token. Very good question. So, let me start slightly, you know, kind of afar. If you look at some of the most successful games of all time, they actually have a two currency economy. You have sort of easy come, easy go, um, you know, acquire a currency through the gameplay, spend in the gameplay. Um, and then you typically have a lot more valuable currency that is a lot harder to come by. And very frequently, it is the sort of source of monetization for games. And interaction between these two currencies, um, you know, can you know, typically deliver some nuances of the gameplay. Think of us in a similar fashion. We have created an original business called Sweatcoin. And because it was centralized, we've chosen a very, very simple uh, token economics. You walk 1,000 steps, we verify them to make sure that they're genuine and 
it's not like, you know, you put your phone on your dog and the dog is running or you put your phone on the dishwasher and it's shaking. You know, it, there is a there is an amazing website. If you have a few minutes to spare and to have a laugh, go to see unfitbits.com. It's a website that teaches you how to trick your phone and your wearables into believing that you're active while you are not. We basically had to look at every single one of those use cases and make sure that none of those and many, many more don't work in Sweatcoin. So once we verified your 1,000 steps, then you receive one Sweatcoin. As you can imagine, with number of users around the world and them walking more and more, the number of sweat coins is growing quite rapidly. So it is an inflationary currency, right? And as I mentioned, it's easy come as you go. Um, you know, can you acquire it uh, uh, every day? And anywhere where there is sweat coin, you can play with sweat coins. And the utility is you can spend them in the marketplace inside the sweat coin app with our partners that accept sweat coins as payment for their goods, services, experiences, I don't know, health, fitness, goods, fashion, vanity, accessories, nutrition, healthy food, etc., etc. And sweat, which is our uh, crypto token launched last September on NIR, is a completely different currency. Um, the tokenomics of sweat is such that every next sweat requires more steps to be taken than the previous one. So the step value or the number of steps that goes into each next step is growing gradually. What does it mean? It means that while the total token number is increasing, the inflation is constantly reduced. And in perpetuity, it is approaching zero. In addition, in our tokenomics, we have committed to the market that we'll be spending at least 50% of our profit on buying tokens of the market and then community votes on what to do with them. Um, last vote that we've conducted, more than 80% of you have voted to burn those tokens. So if you start looking at the balance of this constantly reducing inflation and buy and burn mechanics, then we will become deflationary as far as sweat is concerned in a long run. Now, I think to the question of, um, you know, kind of where do we get this revenue? The revenue is something that we've honed on for the last seven years in health and fitness. We did manage to build a formidable front franchise that is not only growing, but it is also been profitable for multiple years because we found multiple revenue streams that most other health and fitness businesses did not find. And what we realized is in Web3, in addition to those three big revenue streams that we have in Web2, we have a number of other revenue streams that we are exploring right now. We can definitely get to it once we're talking about roadmap and features that are about to be released. So, yeah, that's basically it. Sweatcoin, centralized, inflationary, used in Sweatcoin app. Sweat is decentralized, built on near, and it is designed to take more and more physical activity into each unit of currency over time. And it is designed to become deflationary in perpetuity. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. That's uh, really interesting. And thanks for sharing with, uh, with us. So, I mean, uh, move to earn business model always uh, attracts uh, huge users with uh, promise of high yield at the beginning. However, uh, the token values uh, decline over time. So uh, how does uh, SWAT solve this uh, problem and uh, maintain token price stability for long-term uh, sustainable uh, development? 
<laughs> it's a very good question. I think that, you know, given that this is a public forum, I have to say this, which is we're really not chasing or influencing the, the price of the token. I think that, you know, kind of anyone who is close to legal and regulatory, you know, kind of context understands why I'm saying this and why we genuinely are not doing it. However, what I can tell you is that we are very experienced businessmen. We are building this business for the last eight years. It has always been our vision to build a currency backed by the value of physical activity, which, need, which means that you know, we need a crypto token built on blockchain, right? Now, what we know is successful business always satisfies one criteria. It generates more revenue, then it burns costs. And this is what we are focusing on. We're focusing on building a long-term sustainable business that is going concern and is financially healthy. Once this is achieved, everyone is very, very happy. It's a myth that you can have an extremely successful token. And I'm not talking about short term. I'm not talking about you know, pumps and dumps. I'm talking about sort of long-term strategy. It is a myth that you can have an extremely successful uh, token with a project that is not able to turn itself into a sustainable business. So that's as far as I would go. You can absolutely trust us that we are building long-term sustainable business. We know how to generate revenue in this space, and we're already generating healthy revenue. As you've seen in the past, we already done some buy, um, you know, kind of using proceeds from our revenues on the market, and they've been extremely sort of successful and impactful. Now, can we sort of play against the market? I, you know, I doubt it. I think that, you know, kind of, let's face it, the market right now is going up and down sideways not necessarily on what we do, but on the news of SVB, signature, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, kind of we never know when it's going to blow up next. But what we know for sure is that we have sufficient reserves and we have capabilities and experience to continue building through this mess to make sure that when the market recovers, that will be one of you know, fewer projects, because a lot of projects that are still alive right now, over the next six to 12 months, they will perish. We have absolutely no doubt that we will be one of the projects that is going to be benefiting from the next bull run. You got it. Awesome. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's really helpful for sure sharing that. Okay, so uh, we heard that you have uh, just announced the U.S. launch uh, in uh, September 2023. Uh, this is really uh, exciting. So uh, can you reveal more details regarding this? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, it would be my pleasure. Uh, ever, ever since we launched last September, there is no day that passed without me getting a handful of requests from our U.S. Sweat coin users, you know, kind of, you got to bring sweat into the US, you got to bring sweat wallet into the US, the amount of these requests has been absolutely incredible. And we have a significant pull from the community. The second thing that happened is that we are making, you know, big strides towards decentralization. You know, we already had our first vote on burn or not to burn tokens. We have just hired an individual that is leading our decentralization strategy, and we are putting sort of uh, meat on the bones uh, of that. And, you know, kind of we are very, very keen to make sure that, you know, this massive community that we have built all around the world is getting higher and higher share of voice and say in the way our project is developing. And the third thing is, what we're seeing in the U.S., while there is no 
kind of positive development really in terms of projects being regulated and getting a blessing from the regulator. We, over the last sort of year and a half, we're understanding more and more what are the concerns, what aspects of the product are the highest concern for the regulators. And the way we're approaching going into the US is we will be as if we were regulated in terms of disclosures, in terms of you know, transparency of the project, and also you know, absolutely focusing on making sure that we do right by US consumers or US users, because let's not forget the major you know, kind of remit and the major objective of all regulators around the world is to protect retail. And the major issue is when the projects have nefarious goals in mind, when they are extracting money out of people's pockets, we are not one of those projects. We extract value by creating physical activity in the world. And we know that physical activity has value. If you take more steps per day, you benefit. Your family also enjoys it. They get the benefit. Your insurer benefits because you are healthier and you're going to live longer. Your employer benefits because you call in sick less and you're more productive and you are in a better mood at work, regardless if it's remote or in the office. And your country benefits because over your lifetime, which is going to be longer because you're physically active, you are going to generate more tax revenue. So the amount of wealth or the amount of economic benefits that bringing additional physical activity in the world creates is phenomenal. And if we get just 10% of that, it will be a phenomenally big business. Let me just give you one illustration. McKinsey, you probably know them, um, you know, one of the kind of blue chip consulting firms, did a very interesting report several years ago that looked at the biggest distract or de detractors, no, destroyers of value around the world. And the top three are wars and effectively killing people, weapons, uh, obvious one. Second is smoking. Third is obesity and sedentary behavior. The amount of GDP destroyed by, 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 by obesity and sedentary behavior uh, per year is $2 trillion. This is just destruction of GDP. This does not include kind of positive, possible positive impacts, such as increase in productivity, increase in life expectancy, Etc. Etc. So we are looking at a massive industry. Another way to think about it is, you know, about a couple of hundred years ago, we started creating what we now call attention economy, because everyone realized that attention is valuable, that all the economic relationships start with you, me, or that consumer starting to pay attention to your message, to your brand. And right now, this is multi-trillion dollar economy per year around the world. Now, physical activity and physical activity economy is the next step. We know that physical activity has objective value. Increase in physical activity creates a lot of positive economic impact. And what we're doing is we're creating this physical activity economy or movement economy and we're putting sweat at the heart of it so that it will power those economic interactions between your insurer and yourself. Because guess what? You know, they will be able to offer you insurance cheaper if you are physically active. Your employer can also participate in the process and reward you for the sweat that you generate because they're benefiting with you being less sick, being more productive, and your mental health also being higher and better, so on and so forth. So, you know, kind of, I'm really, really excited about the size and the magnitude of the economy that we're building. And more and more parties are getting on this bandwagon and are starting to understand, you know, kind of how big is the opportunity here. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of members based in US, so yeah, probably they are also excited to uh, start using uh, uh, Swap too. Okay, so yeah, I mean, uh, uh, curious to know about the countries currently that uh, uh, Swap is uh, available right now. Yeah, I mean, we're uh, basically think worldwide minus US and China and few excluded countries <coughs> such as North Korea, Iran, uh, but sort of usual suspects. Uh, can, if, you, if you go at, you know, kinda, and look at the countries where you know, kinda, large decentralized crypto projects are, we're pretty much mimicking their footprint. Got it. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's really great. Okay, so yeah, I mean, uh, thanks uh, for providing all those uh, uh, information regarding uh, SWAT. That is really um, helpful and uh, would like more like a, a personal question. So just if you can let us know more about what uh, inspired you uh, to create uh, the SWAT economy and then uh, migrate from Web2 to, uh, to, uh, to Web3. So were you involved like in Web3 uh, before you started with SWAT? Brilliant question. Uh, I'll, I'll start with SWATcoin and then, you know, we'll talk about blockchain and Web3. Um, the idea of SWATcoin was born out of a personal problem. Um, I had a business that unfortunately perished in very kind of bizarre circumstances. And to clear my head, I went for a run and I started talking to sort of my co-founder and, uh, you know, kind of, I realized that I couldn't even run five kilometers, even though just three years before that, I was climbing some of the highest mountains in the world. Um, I lost my fitness in extremely short period of time. And we just started talking, you know, how is that possible? What, you know, can, what, what happens? <laughs> you know, why do we stop being active? And, you know, kind of one question after another, we realized that it is genuine, universal problem. 100% of people would like to be more active than they are. And we typically blame money, motivation, energy, time, tiredness, you know, whatever. There are plenty of excuses that, you know, kind of people, uh, people use. And we desperately, every year in early January, we go to the gym, we get a membership, and by early February, we give up on it. It's pretty incredible how kind of universal this pattern is. And what we realized is that we're blaming the wrong thing. The reason why we are not as active as we want to be is because nature does not want you to be active. Nature did not build you to be active. Nature built you to survive. And that means preserving calories rather than spending them. So the pattern that nature wants you to follow is if there is food, you eat. And unless you are about to become food, you are sitting next to fire and preserve those calories. And you only run if there is a next mammoth on the horizon. You know, kind of being fit and doing pull-ups and push-ups and spending all that energy uh, and potentially run out of calories by the time next piece of food arrives would mean the death of the tribe. So nature gave us this behavioral feature that helped us to survive called present bias. Well, right now we'd probably call it a bug, uh, but back then it was feature, which is basically you're focusing on survival right here, right now, unless there is food or unless I am about to become food to somebody else, I am not running, I am not exercising, I'm sitting and preserving those calories. That pattern is still with us. And there's only one way to deal with present bias and overcome present bias, it's instant gratification. So when we arrive to this conclusion, we kind of went, wow, you know, actually we can create technology, we can create a tech solution to help people change the relationship with their physical activity, with their steps from that of wasteful from the point of view of nature to gainful where every step is actually enriching you 
And by doing this, we were able to change behavior by 20%. We have a medical grade research with University of Warwick in the UK that looked at our user base. And, you know, they concluded that we make our users 20% more active after they install the app than they were before, which is kind of pretty incredible. So we are creating that additional physical activity in the world. <laughs> and that's how basically Sweatcoin idea was created. Personal problem, wanting to figure out how, you know, I can persuade myself and others to become more physically active. Then there was a minimum viable product, and the rest is history. We now are all around the world, and we have more than 130 million, uh, 130 million users. Now, why blockchain? Um, and what is my relationship with blockchain? I looked at Bitcoin for the first time in 2011, and I got really fascinated by the technology, you know, can, I, I, I cannot claim that I was clever enough to understand the potential of the token. I kind of looked at the token and went, okay, well, I understand the role that it plays and that it rewards, you know, miners and, you know, can, but I got really, really fascinated by the open ledger and securing transactions and a way to guarantee no double spend in, you know, kind of right in front of you in public. It's, you know, kind of, it's pretty incredible. Um, so I knew in 2014 that I would be working with crypto and, you know, kind of in blockchain because I got fascinated by, by this technology. And that run kind of brought the two and two together because we realized that if we want to reward people for physical activity, then... Either we miraculously generate huge amounts of dollars, pounds, whatever, which is, as a startup, is extremely difficult to do, or we actually create our own currency. And the reason why we're passionate about creating our own currency is because, as I mentioned, physical activity has non-zero value. And if you start tokenizing physical activity, you are creating an asset that is inherently valuable, that can power all of those interactions that I've described, you know, doctors, insurers, um, you know, kind of employers, etc. All of these different, you know, kind of use cases that we all are so familiar with now can actually have a financial element added to them. You know, as a bit of a kind of mistake, I actually pay my kids pocket money on the basis of the amount of sweat and sweat coins that they generate. You know, this is just an example. You want to have an extra ice cream? Well, you know what to do. You know, <laughs> take a little bit more steps. So, you know, my fascination with, uh, with blockchain uh, didn't stop there, but it was pragmatic enough that we did not build on Bitcoin fork, as I mentioned to you in 2014. And it carried us through. We looked into doing an ICO in 2017, but we opted out because the field just got completely crammed with crooks and thieves and absolutely horrible projects that were doing rug pulls. I mean, we just couldn't go into that space because we're already a big, legitimate business with millions of users, significant turnover. So... And last year, it's a completely different environment. I think the act got cleaned up tremendously. There are a lot more blockchains to build on, and we've chosen Near. And we really enjoy working with that team, actually. If anyone here is looking into selecting an L1, I would say if you are a must-scale um, consumer product, then near is a you know kind of uh, is most likely right choice for you i stop there awesome yeah that's really interesting story and yeah thanks for sharing uh how you started uh, uh with with us okay so yeah i mean um i finished with my uh my my questions so uh, before we open the floor uh for our uh, community to ask, uh, please uh, 
feel free to share anything that you would like to uh, uh, to to add here. No, I think I'm happy to go into questions if uh, you know if anyone's got them. There's a bunch awesome, of questions awesome. in the public voice chat. Okay, then I, yeah, I, I will start uh, then with those. Uh, let me. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, so there is a question. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, please, Joyce. Well, thank you. Hi, Oleg. Hey, jo this is Joyce. Um, sad to miss you at East Denver, but I am. Hey, Joyce. Hey, hey, hey. Um, I particularly really interested about uh, the Sweat Hero NFT game. I'd love to hear, you know, the developments on that. And would that be also available in the U.S. as well when you guys launch the economy? I'm, I'm sorry, Joyce. I had a, you know, a bit of a bubble in my Wi-Fi. Could you repeat it? Apologies. But yes, of course. Um, I'd love to hear the developments on the Sweat Hero NFT gaming side. Um, yeah. It sounds like a really exciting area uh, where everyone has their own leg NFT. I thought it was a really cute, <laughs> funny aspect to it. Yeah, and, and now those, those NFTs are definitely getting a heck of a lot of attention. And, you know, the team spent an incredible amount of time on, you know, kind of finer details of that. Um, you know, we used Concept Art House, I think very kind of famous studio to, you know, kind of help us get things into motion. And right now it's all in-house. We, you know, we do have 3D, you know, uh, designers uh, um, that, you know, kind of just spend 100% of their time working on this. Um, so the NFT... Uh, game is right now in beta testing with about 6,000 people. The feedback is amazing. We are ironing out some bugs, some issues, and understanding the you know kind of how it operates at scale. We expect that by summer, so at the end of April, May, we are going to add you know human to human uh, game mode. So right now you're playing against bots. So we're going to start doing matchmaking. And, you know, as I mentioned, you know, by summer, this is going to be rolled out. And definitely by the time we are launching in the U.S., I expect that we are going to have so sort of fully fledged NFT game available to you. That, and it's super casual. If you haven't seen mechanics, just type Sweat Hero into YouTube, you, you're going to see plenty of uh, beta testers uh, sort of showing you exactly how it works right now. What is even more exciting for me is because I am very keen to figure out how to make NFTs work, not that sort of 10,000 NFT collection level, because you know, that's pretty much all we have at the moment as, you know, as far as utility is concerned, collectibles. What we are developing is a dynamic NFT. So on the basis of your gameplay and on the basis of your physical activity and on the basis of your on-chain activity, your legs are going to evolve and change. You know, let me just give some, an illustration. Don't to sort of hold my feet to fire on this, but you know, kind of just to paint a picture. Imagine that if you walk very little and you sit in front of a computer and do Zoom calls like I do, then you're gonna have spaghetti legs. But if you actually walk a lot and you clock that, you know, 10,000 steps a day, you're gonna have muscly legs. That's the, you know, kind of that's the type of stuff that uh, um, I'm talking about. So visual representation of you in our environment in kind of sweat economy world is going to be dependent on your physical activity, your gameplay, your in-app activity, and your on-chain activity, which means that everyone is going to have a very, very unique and, you know, kind of individual set of legs. 
And what we foresee is that that is going to create an interesting dynamic around it, around them potentially becoming collectibles. And this is without having to control the number of NFTs in the collection to 10,000, which is a you know, pretty much standard approach that all NFT projects are using. Yeah, this is super cool, and and I'm super excited for it. I think a lot of it's, folks, yeah, it's also extremely complicated. Like you know, kind of dynamic NFTs are an absolute beast. There aren't that many projects that have done it well. We know each and single one of them, and we're actually talking to you know, kind of people that have been kind of most successful in sort of the best way to design, scope, and develop this uh, going forward. I'm definitely extremely excited about this. So would there be an NFT sale event? You know, we're not looking at this right now. Um, and I, I, I guess the main reason for this is you, you, you probably seen and heard that the attitude of Apple towards NFTs is, you know, kind of extremely negative. And, you know, can you probably heard that uh, Coinbase wallet even had to remove NFTs from, from their interface completely <laughs> because of the um, uh, kind of uh, disagreements with, uh, with Apple. So we're really closely following these developments and we do not have it in the plan. However, we think that the situation will change and as soon as it will change, we will definitely be very interested in releasing rare and epic uh, leg collections uh, to users that want to play sort of in the higher arenas and the higher level of the game. Gotcha. Thank you for that. I'll stop here since we have a lot of questions in the in the Q and A. Thank you, Joyce. Yeah, thanks, uh, Joyce, for question. So I see that also Arthur has a kind of similar uh, question. Uh, please let me know if uh, what Ola described uh, covered everything, or you are have any follow up question. No, that was super helpful. Thank. You. Awesome. Okay, thanks. So, so yeah, let's move to other questions. So from Kadwan, we have, uh, how do you fight uh, fraud? And how did you factor fraud into uh, your tokenomics? And the second question is, uh, do Web3 users have better retention than the Web2 users? Mm. Great question. Very, very thoughtful. Um... So on fraud, we, we started thinking about it from the very beginning. And we have a whole team uh, that is called Fraud Team. And we're also very lucky that our kind of most senior data person uh, in his past has done serious anti-fraud work for kind of online casinos. So, you know, kind of our starting point was pretty, you know, kind of pretty good. And we look at fraud on huge number of levels. So we're not approaching it extremely simplistically. You know, kind of, there, is, there are protections immediately on your mobile device. There are, of course, protections of data in transit. There are kind of extreme protections around our backend and Oracle. Um, as I mentioned to you, we do have this verification model that is basically looking at every single bit of step data that we receive and compares it and basically analyzes it for patterns of gaming. And the way it is set up right now is not that it makes the decision if these steps are genuine or not, if it sees that steps are not genuine. As soon as model thinks that these steps might not be genuine and there is any doubt, then it immediately discards them because, you know, kind of, we want to make sure that only 100% of 
kind of guaranteed physical activity that somebody sweated over can be converted into sweat coins. So, you know, kind of we have very, very comprehensive view of how to protect ourselves, how to fight fraud, but we also have a bounty system. We haven't announced yet our Web3 bounty system, but, you know, kind of this information is coming very, very uh, soon. So, you know, kind of we have paid already quite a lot of white hat hackers for, you know, finding this and finding that. And because we do greater good in the world, it's actually quite amazing how many people are coming with sort of helpful tips. And rather than, you know, kind of taking advantage of something that, you know, they might have discovered in the past, people are actually informing us and we've, uh, you know, kind of we, we've rewarded them with, you know, Sweat coins, uh, you know, some people actually, you know, one guy uh, ended up working with us because that's what he wanted. He wanted to be part of the project after he found a, you know, kind of a vulnerability that he plugged. And then he spent quite a long time helping us uh, kind of uh, improve our security. So this is on the fraud side. Remind me the second question, apologies. Yeah, so uh, do Web3 users have better retention than the Web2 users? Yes. Yes. It, uh, I, you know, kinda, I wouldn't say that this is night and day, but they are, you know, kinda, they're definitely significantly uh, more engaged on both Web2 and Web3 platforms. And they also higher value for us uh, because, you know, in Web 2, we have certain revenue streams. In Web 3, we have few additional revenue streams. Uh, so, you know, kind of we can generate, you know, kind of higher levels of income on users that bridge into Web 3. Yeah, uh, thanks uh, for answering those. So yeah, uh, Kadwan, please uh, let us know if you have any follow-up question. Uh, meanwhile, there is another question from uh, GJ George. Uh, could you provide more information on the SWAT DAO and clarify the responsibilities of uh, movement validators in this uh, decentralized ecosystem? Brilliant question and quite far-fetched. I mean, we are really literally making our first steps. We're starting our governance. We're starting voting. We're putting some very important decisions to the community as opposed to kind of making, uh, kind of making them here. And, uh, you know, I cannot tell you yet or I don't have a ready answer as to kind of what movement oracles roles and what decisions they will be uh, they will be taking because we just haven't figured out all the details and all the elements of the roadmap. But I can guarantee you that we have full and complete commitment to you know push decentralization to its uh, absolute limit. It would be absolutely incredible and amazing to have the largest DAO in the world because, you know, we already have more token holders than most projects. And having a DAO of 100 million members focused on making the world more physically active would be an absolutely incredible testament to the power of decentralization and building community-led projects. So I'm sure that oracles or movement validators will be playing an important role there. Well, already been approached by some projects that are operating or playing with other types of physical activity, like cycling or swimming, who would be interested in operating this uh, alternative movement validators, but we have not yet moved into specifics of how this will work in terms of technical flow and how it will work in terms of their voting power. Uh, thank you uh, for that. So, 
Yeah, we have another question from uh, Han Solo. Uh, he is asking, what are the conflicting uh, interests, if any, uh, between uh, sweat token and sweat coin? So what is, um, what in, in, interaction, interest? Uh, apologies, I just didn't hear the word. Uh, yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, mm -hmm. So the conflicting interest, if uh, any, uh, between uh, sweat and uh, sweat economy? Um, really, I, I can't tell you anything other than probably resourcing. I mean, as any business, <laughs> you know, we are 135 people strong and you know, kind of when you bring in resources, you have an opportunity to put them either on Sweatcoin or on Sweat Wallet and Sweat. And so far, this has been probably the only point of tension that, you know, kind of I can think of. So I don't see any, any conflict really. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, Han Solo, if you have any follow-up question. Uh, please let us know. Okay, uh, another one. So from Maxway, uh, he's saying that uh, he's really interested in what you guys are building, and uh, he has two questions. The first one is asking if the app is available on iOS, and are there any boot measures being considered for users? And the second one, uh, can it be possible to swap uh, sweat for other tokens on your app? Yeah, I'll start with the second one. Yes, we're working on a uh, trading functionality and that should be going live literally within the next few weeks. We are integrating with the DEX, also building on a near, and you will be able to kind of trade um, different tokens, not just sweat, but I don't know, Bitcoin, ETH, stables, etc. So this is this is definitely coming. And are we available on iOS? Yes, indeed, we are. Awesome. Okay, and there was also another question. So, um, uh, are there any boot measures uh, being considered for users? Boot measures? I'm not sure no. I understand. What, what, what does that mean? I see. Okay, yeah. So, Maxwell, if you can uh, provide more details regarding that part. Meanwhile, I think we can move to uh, another question from TJ Godel. Um, he is asking, uh, do Sweat Dynamic NFTs have the futures of uh, cell bond tokens? It's a very good question. I, you know, can I, I'm not entirely certain if we want to force them to be soul bound or most of them will be sort of soul bound because people don't want to give up on something that they've put so much sort of blood sweat and tears and time into um, you know for those that you know kind of don't know nuances soul bound are non-transferable tokens so our thinking right now that going to be dynamic, they will be developing and evolving on the basis of, you know, kind of your physical activity. However, we're not intending at this moment to not make them transferable. So should you decide to transfer it or sell it, you should be able to. Okay, uh, thanks. So, yeah, we have another question from Arthur. Um, he's asking, are you planning on uh, introducing earning uh, from other activities apart from walking, like uh, swimming, cycling, even weightlifting? Yeah, <clears throat> this is what we have in the roadmap. If you kind of look at the phase four or five, I don't remember exact uh, sort of numbering, but yes. We are intending to work with other project teams that specialize in 
detection and verification of that physical activity. And we would be very keen to make sure that they run their own movement validators and they can issue sweat on the basis of other types of physical activity. Uh, we are not doing it yet. And at the moment, we're not intending to do it in-house because in the spirit of decentralization, <clears throat> we don't want to consolidate everything under one roof. And our objective is to create, to turn sweat into that principal unit of physical activity value and power that movement economy. The more third parties and more third you know, kind of projects are coming in, the more this is going to be not just us as a business, but it is going to become an economy. So if you're working for one of those projects or you know a project that you think should be doing this, please introduce us. I would love to start establishing these relationships already now. I'm terribly sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I just been pinged. I need to jump into, <clears throat> into an interview. So it's been an absolute pleasure being here. Thank you very much for very thoughtful and you know kind of very interesting questions. And uh, you know where to find me. You know, kind of I'm on Discord. If you want to ping me, I'm always there. But Telegram is probably better. Telegram is O for Menko. And my Twitter is Oleg underscore F E M, Oleg Fem. Thank you very much, guys. Pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you all uh, for coming on the call. Yeah, we really appreciate you taking uh, the time to share with us your story. Okay, thanks also everyone who joined this call. Um, have a great day.